Hello and welcome to part 2 of this video in which we are finding the Fourier series coefficients of a rectified sine wave. In part 1 we set up the problem and we showed how we were going to build this rectified sine wave in such a way that we could use the properties of the Fourier series coefficients to um, compute what the Fourier series coefficients would be without actually having to work any integrals. And you can see from this page where um, we're showing uh, computing the Fourier series coefficients d sub k, which are the Fourier series coefficients of r, our square wave times our sine wave, just how much easier this is than working an integral, right? Um, basically, we worked our convolution, we got this expression, and uh, that gives us uh, the d sub k's. So the next step in working the problem we now have the Fourier series coefficients for v of t. Now we need to time shift v of t by half a period and that will give us um, basically the half of the waveform that we don't have now and then uh, we just add everything together and we're done. So let's go down here and first let's look at time shifting uh, v of t and see what that does to the Fourier series coefficients um, from the time shift properties if I have x of t minus t0 I basically multiply my Fourier series coefficient by this e to the minus jk omega 0 t0 so if I go back to this and um, I have these guys, I've, these are my d sub k's, or I'm sorry, I have the Fourier, co Fourier series coefficients of v, which are my d sub k's. So this guy is going to um, just be, it's going to have Fourier series coefficients d sub k. I'll come now. Okay, so it's going to be d sub k um, e to the, uh, where did it go on my notes, minus j k omega 0, and I'm shifting by t over 2. Now you'll remember that omega 0 is 2 pi over t. So omega 0 times t over 2 is just going to give us, these two together give us a value of pi. So I have um, d sub k e to minus j k pi. And this e to the minus j k pi term is um, sort of an interesting animal in the sense that it is going to be 1 when k is even because when k is even it will be um, e to the 0 or e to the minus j2 pi. Uh, so when k is even uh, I'm going to have multiples of 2 pi here and the, uh, that will give me basically a cosine of a multiple of 2 pi which is 1. Okay, so this is for k even. It'll be negative 1 when k is odd. Okay, so um, another way of writing this uh, is uh, we can write this as minus 1 to the k. Sometimes you'll see it done this way because it's kind of, this is much more compact and less messy than writing it this way. Okay, so the last thing I need to do then is I know that x of t, this x of t that I have here, is v of t plus v of t minus t over 2, which means that my Fourier series coefficients are going to be, and we'll call these Fourier series coefficients c sub k, it will be equal to the Fourier series coefficients of v of t, which are just d of k, plus the Fourier series coefficients of this time shifted version of v which we've got here which are d sub k times minus 1 
to the k power. Okay, so when k is even, um, this is plus 1, and I just have 2 times d of k. When k is odd, I'll have d of k minus d of k, or 0. So this is k even and k odd. Okay, well there you have it. We actually now have the answer that we were trying to find. We have the Fourier series coefficients for the rectified sine wave. And um, I've plotted them so you can see what they look like. They look like this, and you'll notice, as you would expect from what we just saw, that for odd values of k, the sky, the sky, the sky, and so on, the magnitude of the Fourier series coefficient is zero. Okay, which is what we just showed. And then again, to check to make sure that I've got the right answer, I reconstructed the time waveform from these Fourier series coefficients. And to do that, I got something that looked like this. And you can see that indeed it does look like a rectified sine wave. Now something that um, is useful to think about, may actually be somewhat confusing until you figure it out, uh, you'll notice that our original sine wave uh, had a period of 1. So if I draw um, an original sine wave, it, whoa, that's awful. It does, doesn't look at all like that. It looked something like this. Okay, really, if you, you have to really put emphasis on the something. Okay, but the point I'm trying to make is that it had a period of 1. Um, actually, this period is normalized, uh, so it had a period of t. And we've created something that has a period of half that. Our rectified sine wave has double the frequency and half the period of our original sine wave. And so you can see this actually shows up in the fact that because I have these zero Fourier series coefficients for every odd harmonic, basically I start off with my the, the first harmonic that actually shows up, which corresponds to k is equal to minus 2 and 2, is double the frequency of my fundamental frequency, omega 0. This harmonic corresponds to, or, or these two terms correspond to a frequency of 2 omega 0. So um, the point I'm making here is just that this rectified sine wave does, it does have a period that's half the original period, and our analysis ends up showing that. OK, one last comment, and then I'll set you free. Um, we found our result when we multiplied r by the sine wave using the multiplication property, which said that the product of two time signals uh, leads to the convolution of their uh, Fourier series coefficients. It turns out there's another way we could do that. And so I'd like to show you how we could do that. And the way we can do that is using the frequency shifting property. So um, let's see if we go here. This is where we actually went through this. Um, oh, this is, uh, well, let's see, we'll go to the next picture. Okay, this is where we actually did it. And this was kind of a mess. It turns out that you can do this uh, somewhat less messy as follows. And um, I'm going to get rid of a lot of this, but I don't want to get rid of uh, the work that we did to figure out how to write a sub k minus 1 more simply because we'll need that. Okay, so another way of doing this is to notice that in the time domain, this r of t sine omega 0 t, I can write this as r of t times sine of omega 0 t. Well, sine I can write as 1 over 2j e to the j omega 0 t minus e to the minus j omega 0 t. Okay, and um, 
I'll take this 1 over 2j out in front uh, and then pretty much ignore it for a while. And then so we have r of t is e to the j omega 0 t, or I'm sorry, we have r of t times e to the j omega 0 t minus r of t e to the minus j omega 0 t. Okay, and at this point I can use the frequency shifting property. I have a signal, a time signal, which in this case will be r of t times something that looks like this, where m is something I need to figure out. So I'll go back to my picture here. Uh, I have j times, I can write this as j times 1 times omega 0 t, uh, same here, and I can write this as j times minus 1 times omega 0 t. So this would correspond to an m equal to 1, and this corresponds to an m equal to negative 1. So when I take the Fourier series of these guys, I still have 1 over 2j, and then I have a sub k minus m. In this case, m is equal to 1, so I guess I better actually write that as k minus 1 minus a sub k minus m, so I, m is negative 1 here, so it'll be a sub k plus 1. Okay, and you can see that this is a lot tidier than the uh, uh, stuff we went through before, mostly because, um, well, we skipped a couple uh, tidying up steps. But the idea is that by using the frequency shifting property, and recognizing the fact that a sine wave can be broken up into these complex exponentials, I actually make this computation quite a bit simpler. Uh, this is something that you can do anytime you have a signal, uh, say r of t or x of t, multiplied by a sine or a cosine. And it's a trick that we use a lot, uh, particularly when we're looking at communication systems. Okay, so that pretty much wraps up this video. I hope you found it interesting and helpful. Thanks for watching.